this is legendary cpo africanus also known as cpo prime and we have the same thing with jonah of arc prime and Boudica prime that's what the little p stands for right here and you guys might be wondering omniarch like what are you, what are you doing like we know we know what these guys are all about right i mean cpo prime came into the game in april of 2022 and then later that year we saw joan of arc prime come in september of 2022 and Boudica prime was right in the middle there in june so next month cpo prime will be two years old in rise of kingdoms and literally since the moment he came into the game he has been open field meta for two years nobody debates this everybody knows that Scipio is one of the most dominant open field commanders and if you have spent any amount of time on YouTube watching rise of kingdoms content you'll know that everyone recommends using Scipio Prime in the open field and the same can be said for Joan of Arc Prime who came in September she's basically been open field meta since the moment she came into the game so why are we, what am I talking about here like why am I talking about this well I came across a couple of statistics here that absolutely blew my mind and this is one of the cool things about the achievement system in rise of kingdoms because it will tell you the percentage of governors in rise of kingdoms that have achieved the same thing that you might have achieved so for example less than 0.1 percent of players have expertise Zhang Yu and this to me makes sense because getting an expertise on a commander is a significant investment so even though Zhang Yu has been in the game for a long time and yes he is a very popular commander an expertise for a commander is not something that lots of players do very often especially for a conquering or rally commander even though most players use Zhang Yu as an open field commander these days but this achievement rate is also kind of a double-edged sword because if we scroll Scroll down here we're gonna find some really interesting statistics and in particular we'll see here that less than 0.1 percent of players own prime CPO that's just an unlock that is just getting your hands on this commander having him at one zero 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 just unlocking this commander will get you this achievement and less than point less than 0.1 percent of players have claimed this or achieved this special feat I guess you could call it which to me is mind-blowing it has been two years of this commander being open field meta every even if you're a free-to-play player every free-to-play guy tells you that CPO Prime is one of the best commanders to invest in he's been that way for two years nothing has changed and if we come into the potentiate category here you can see less than 0.1 percent of players own Nevsky less than 0.1% of players own Boudicca prime less than 0.1% of players own Joan of Arc prime what is going on here these commanders are no question I mean maybe Boudicca prime these days you can question but Nevsky Joan of Arc prime CPO prime these are all they have been open field meta for two years now or a year and a half and it is unbelievable to me that less less than 0.1 percent of players have even unlocked them it just and these are wheel of fortune commanders it's not like they're mightiest governor commanders where you have to compete against other players just to get the unlock i would understand that okay i can i can totally get that but even if you don't spin the wheel of fortune at this point you can unlock them from the legendary tavern you can get nevsky and Scipio guaranteed or even Boudicca prime right like there's no reason for players in the end game to not not have even unlocked these commanders which sounds shocking because if you watch any kbk these are commanders that you're always going to see you are always going to see cpo prime nevsky joan of our prime these are like non-negotiable if you are going to fight in the end game you basically need these commanders i recently made a video about this right so what is actually going on here like what like how how can how can we logically understand this data because it is actually mind-blowing i think one thing that we have to understand first of all is that the achievement rate is based on the number of governors right and if i come into my settings here i have control over a lot of governors okay i have created lots of different accounts in lots lots of different kingdoms for a variety of different reasons but i'm gonna be real with you guys the average player doesn't even have a farm account I know that that sounds shocking but like if you come into your city hall and you tap this little eye here you can see the different uh ages that you've reached as you progress your account and the feudal age is at level 21 the dark age is at city hall 16 right but the bronze age is city hall level four 
you can get city hall level four in about seven minutes of game time like it literally getting city hall four is zero amount of work like you can get there instantaneously the tutorial will get you to at least like two or three right so entering the bronze age is like instantaneous when you play the game and if you come into the engineering achievements only about half the players get to bronze age four right so that immediately kind of deletes the farm account argument right because everybody's farm account is at least city hall four right i would hope so it would be it would be pointless to have a farm account that is city hall level three right it makes no sense but then it gets even more shocking when you come down to the dark age right dark age is city hall level 16. so only 6.7 percent of players get city hall 16. hang on only wait a minute entering the dark ages city hall 16 which means 6.7 percent of players have at least reached here okay and this is what you need to get tier four by the way you cannot i don't think you can get tier four units before the dark age so this means 93 percent of governors have not gotten tier four units like and look like i'm sure there's people who have like downloaded the game they play for 20 minutes they say oh you know what this game's actually not for me and then they delete the game right and that's probably contributing to this and that every mobile game goes through that process right especially when you have i mean if you've ever seen an advertisement for rise of kingdoms the advertisements are very they are dramatically different right some advertisements show one thing some show another and how accurate those ads are is debatable right some of them are accurate some of them aren't in my opinion that's just my opinion so some people might download the game and say oh this isn't exactly this isn't what i thought it would be and then they delete it whatever right so the truth is that most players who have played rise of kingdoms aren't even getting tier four units and less than 0.1 percent are competitively in my opinion are competitively playing the end game i mean you i just you can't competitively play in the end game without at least unlocking some of these commanders right it, it doesn't even make sense to me so what is like what is going on here what do we do about this because this means that like 99.9 99.9 percent of players who try rise of kingdoms are not getting to the competitive end game right and i think that you know you can call some of them farmers you can call them you know people who just download it for a minute whatever uh, the point is that i mean no matter no matter how you look at it right even if this is off by a large margin even if we say 70 percent of players which would be insanely generous even if we say 70 percent of players aren't making it to competitive end game that's a problem right and i'm curious like what do we do about this i feel like this is it's really disappointing right because the end game of rise of kingdoms is the best part in my opinion and don't get me wrong i liked leveling up my city hall i liked progressing the buildings and and unlocking tier five was like a big deal i felt really excited about that right and i like collecting the different commanders and all this other stuff but the end game season of conquest in my opinion is the most fun that you can have in rise of kingdoms and this to me tells me that 99.9 percent .9 of players are not getting there they're not getting there which is just it is unbelievable right and this also just goes to show like i would argue probably 80 or 90 percent of people who play rise of kingdoms don't watch youtube content for it right like the the content creators here that you see on youtube myself chiskel whoever else i would argue 80 to 90 percent of players don't even know we exist they don't even know who we are right which really puts this game into perspective it's like it is an unbelievably large and global international game and statistics like this just blow my mind and so i'm wondering like how can we help because because this to me shows that the early game is you know people aren't progressing far enough through the early game right they're not making it to the part of the game that is the most fun in my mind now you could argue that like kvk1 is really fun kvk2 is really fun and season of conquest is like it's not that much more fun than kvk2 right so you could argue that sure maybe they got a taste of kvk1 and said oh this maybe isn't for me whatever but i feel like there should there needs to be a way to kind of get these players to end game faster right and i feel like there's such an, an opportunity here with these prime commanders these commanders have been open field meta for literally two years now or a year and a half how depending on which one you're looking at and one of the questions that i get a lot and i'm sure chiskel and other content creators get this question as well is how do i get my joan of arc legendary right how do i get my cpo legendary a lot i've seen new players always ask that why they see my videos and I'm like why is your cpo legendary and mine is is purple a lot of new players have that question and 
that's a great question you would think you know because they are the same historical figure you would think that there would be some way to turn them legendary i mean that makes sense if you think of like pokemon for example a, a pokemon can evolve into a more powerful version you have charmander then you have charizard right like it, it's logical for players to assume that possibly there's a way to progress your purple joan of arc to legendary joan of arc or same thing with cpo prime right i'm wondering why isn't there a system in the game that you know you could teach players up front like hey these epics you're going to be able to progress them to legendary later and they're really good right i feel like there should be a way that players new players should be able to do that now you might say omni arc you know i've spent all these gems on these commanders i've spun the wheel of fortune for these legendary i'm talking about the legendary versions now you know i spent a hundred thousand gems on the wheel right it's not fair if these new players get it for free and it's like yeah but honestly i don't agree i don't care i'm sorry i don't care if i i have been using cpo prime for years i've gotten value out of him and i think it's more important for the health of the game that new players get to end game right it is important for new players to play rise of kingdoms i don't whatever you've spent on your legendaries is a sunk cost that's gone no matter what right there's there, that's a whole fallacy that you're never going to get those gems back regardless of what they do the servers could shut down tomorrow those gems that money it's gone okay the time is gone so to me it is way more important that new players get their hands on competitive late game meta commanders a lot easier because as far as we can tell less than not not equal to less than 0.1% of players have gotten their hands on what is arguably the most obvious open field meta commander of the past two years. There's not been a single person that has even questioned CPO's dominance in the open field. And he's only gotten better with time because now you can use him with Liu Che and it's insane, right? So I'm wondering why there isn't a way already for these new players to have this progression system in the game to where they can get their hands on legendary CPO from their purple CPO, right? Not only does it make sense logically, it's something that 99.9% .9 of players aren't going to do if anyway. And as it stands, this would solve the problem of transitioning to season of conquest. This is a big problem that I have noticed. And I think other content creators have noticed this as well when they're making guides for rise of kingdoms, right? I'm sure 12 inch has had this issue. I'm sure Jiskel has thought about this, but earlier, you know, two years ago or a year ago, it was easy to say, Hey, if you're a new player, you can invest in Yi Song and you can feel good about that because he's going to be meta in the late game and season of conquest. You can use him forever. Right. And some people still use YSG and that's fine. And he's great, but he's not meta anymore. He's not part of the best, you know, open field March for archers anymore and it's that's unfortunate right and so i feel like there's a little bit of um confusion as to how can i recommend a new player to progress to season of conquest like should they be investing in commanders that i know are not late game meta right like i know for sure that you're probably not going to be using your richard at, in pvp in the late game to me this kind of just checks every single box as being good for the game it gives new players a meaningful progression path to the end game right it's not like oh well you could invest in alex but he's not that great or you could invest in ysg but he's like only okay well now it's like no here you have an obvious progression path for three of the best open fields you know or even herman prime some of the best open field pvp commanders in the game now you have a free to play progression mechanic or path to the end game that that makes sense right it makes sense and then you might not feel so bad about investing in YSG in the early game because now you know well at least when I get there I can get one of these prime commanders for free and then maybe you pair the Herman prime with the YSG and that's it that's a good pairing or maybe you you invest in Alexander the Great in KVK2 because you know when you get to season of conquest you're going to be able to get that CPO prime for free maybe it's maybe there's a quest line you have to complete right like maybe you have to get their trust level all the way up and unlock their whole biography or whatever the case might be the, the developers can figure that out but as it stands if only less than 0.1% of players are getting this already that is a much bigger problem than giving new players something for free that maybe you and I had to work for. I'm willing to sacrifice or forgive my sunk cost in these commanders to get new players just in the end game. That's what is important, right? If players aren't even playing the game, then it doesn't really matter uh, anything else. I think that's the most important thing. And it's just shocking to me that the numbers are just so low here. I mean, am I like alone? Am I going crazy? Like, do you guys understand like less than point one it's not one percent it's less than point one which like i don't even i mean if we take a look at this article from december 20th 2023 somewhere in here they say that rise of kingdoms has been downloaded over a hundred million times overall 
right so let's just assume that you know a hundred that let's use that number 100 million people 0.1 percent of a hundred million people is a hundred thousand people so and it's remember it says less than 0.1 percent so that means so that means less than hold on <laughs> less than a hundred thousand people have unlocked cpo prime less than a hundred thousand people like is this what what is like i feel like i need answers like is this counter broken like did they just not update this like what what is going on here like does the average player have like five accounts and like there's actually 500 million like downloaded play governors like well, i don't the math just doesn't make sense to me here and it's blowing my mind right it is blowing my mind i feel like i mean i have 65,000 subscribers here on youtube and as you guys know about 69 percent of you aren't subscribed so that means there's about 200,000 of you that like uh, check out my channel every month maybe you only watch one video a month whatever it is but there's about 200,000 of it so that means about half of you guys haven't even unlocked cpo like what like we could apply the same thing in Joan of Arc or whoever you want. Like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I feel like they got to start giving some of these commanders out like candy, bro. They got to start just handing out these sculptures because it's like, it's just so important for the health of the game that players have something that they can use at the end game. And like, clearly players aren't getting there unless these numbers are wrong. And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to make this video so that way you guys kind of understand the scope of rise of kingdoms. I think this puts a lot of things into perspective. And again, I don't buy the farm account logic, right? Like again, about half players never hit city hall four okay so like you could say that there's farm accounts sure that that is definitely true and that makes up maybe that makes up a good chunk of players but significantly more players are just not getting to end game like that's just the case and so i, I just want to kind of know what you guys think about this in the comment section below let me know what you think about these statistics do you think this is even possible like is this just like uh, it's blowing my mind this can't be real right less than 100 000 people have cpo prime really let me let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below uh, maybe there's an easy explanation that i'm missing but farm accounts is not one of them i do not buy it most players do not have a farm account most players do not watch these videos most players do not know that play, people make youtube content for rise of kingdoms so let me know what you think the answer is in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and of course consider subscribing to the channel because apparently there ain't that many of you that are watching these videos so subscribe to the channel click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace